Welcome to the Rail World. Passion. It's the one eminent thing that drives us, that gives us reason to live. But many are yet to discover this great zeal. So dig deep into your hearts, discover it, and you'll find that it will be the source of your very best moments. It just hit me that this is actually the second to last state on my journey. Klantan has a population of 95% Malays, making it an Islamic state. The Klantanese have a distinguished look and dialect because they are believed to be the only Malays that originated from north. It's nice and early in the morning. Uh, I've done a lot of hiking and I've done a lot of uh, walking around on this trip. Uh, my calves are made of steel pretty much. Can't be saying the same for the top half though. Uh, I haven't done anything strenuous, but that's about to change because I'm here at Gua Musang where I'm going to do some vertical rock climbing on an actual cliff. That is real, everyone. A uh, little bit worried, but Faisal is going to put my mind at ease. My life is in your hands, Faisal. You're going to teach me a thing or two about safety, yeah? Okay. All right. From a helmet that can't actually fit me, to the rope, to the carabiners and the harness, Faisal covered it all. And I gotta trust this man since he's my belayer. So too bad I don't have the right shoes to fit either. Cool, is that it? You ready? All right. I'm not the best climber in the world. <laughs> oh, I'm so weak. Gear up to ensure your life. Yeah, that's a figure eight. That's your lifesaver right now. When you are climbing, you're going to be using your fingertips a lot, so make sure your nails are cut down nice and smooth, all right? So naturally, Faisal climbed up first, while I took mental notes of places to step and grab. Looks like it's my turn. <laughs> oh, my God! All right. Dang. This is really testing my physical abilities. I'm tired. I can feel every muscle movement in my body. I didn't even know they existed. Whew. We're getting higher. Pretty scary. All right, <laughs> about halfway. Fingers starting to cramp. We're pretty high. It's a really good climb, actually. There's a lot of uh, footholds, there's a lot of handholds. You gotta make sure you keep your chalk. Look, I'm sweating so much here. Uh, but the view, we can see all the, uh, all the girls doing their national service. We can see from this point of view, it's a long way down. I mean, you don't want to be stuck up here without any safety harness or anything, so safety first, guys. So uh, there's nothing more to do than to try and make it down in one piece, I suppose. So much easier to stop fighting gravity and simply let it guide me down. Woo! All right. <laughs> Thank you! Thank you! <laughs> it gets pretty scary up there, I'll tell you. Good. Yeah. I like you, I like you. <laughs> Looks like I have an hour to rest my limbs, and that's about the time it takes to get to my next destination, and that's Dabong, a small town a little further up north. So the rock climbing's been defeated, but uh, that's the battle. There's the war still to be won, and that's the mountain. Up there is Gunung Stong. It's the tallest waterfall in Southeast Asia, and I'm gonna go cool off in the nice rushing waters. Gunung Stong is a dome-shaped granite complex aged over hundreds of million years old, and drops from a height of about 990 meters. To hike to the very peak, it takes about six hours, that would actually kill me. So, I'm gonna cheat and stop at the first base. Oh my gosh. We've been going for about 20 minutes now. I'm a lot more unfit than I thought I was. Pretty steep. Uh, there's so many steps. But I think, by the sounds of things, the waterfall is gonna be worth it. So I'll keep on going. Unfortunately, currently it's dry season. On normal days, where I'm actually stepping would be heavily gushing with waters. So it only takes about half an hour to get to uh, sort of the mid-levels or not even a quarter of the way up. But uh, it's so tiring, it feels like eternity because it's pretty steep and it's gonna be a workout. I mean, check this out. Oh yeah, 
all sweat. I haven't even been in yet, so uh, I'm gonna find somewhere where I can cool off and dive on in. Welcome to the Royal World! As much enjoyment as water-themed rides and slides can provide, it cannot compare to diving deep into nature's natural pools. Absolutely priceless. Before my entire body turns into a wrinkly raisin, I had to force myself out of the water and head back to civilization. After freshening up, I headed to Kota Baru for a journey into a land of Malay arts and culture. So I'm finally back on the day trains. I mean, those night trains are pretty killer. They're really tiring. Uh, but I've jumped back on from Muagusa, and I'm headed off to Wakaf Baru. Now, uh, I'm actually stopping off at uh, Kota Baru because I hear there's some great traditional experiences which hold some long established customs in the Malaysian sort of tradition. So I'm gonna check that out, and see what I can get up to. Baru is the state capital and royal city of Kelantan. Also very prevalent with Islamic influences, all city activities come to a halt during the prayer calls. And to get to know a city better, you got to go through the people and the food. It's early, I'm hungry, <laughs> and I hope Kelantan's got some, uh, some good dishes to yep. eat all. I'll guide you through. You're going to guide me through? Yep, I'll guide you through some of my favourites. Yeah. And I've been coming here since I was a little kid. Alright. So the rice is over ah, here. Yummy. Look at this. So now, a lot of the sign of it sort of nearly running out is always a good sign. I mean, exactly. that means yep. a lot of people this are buying it. This is the best seller. I've heard the quantities, they have their, their own way of talking. Okay. I mean, you've got you to teach want, me something. If you want nasi dagang, you can just ask them, nasi dage so. Nasi dage so. Lau. Lau. Lau ayam. 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 Lau ayam means lau ayam is chicken. I did well? Did good? Did well, very well. good. For well, first timer, very good. <laughs> I'm gonna charm all the Clantonese girls. Okay. <laughs> I have to show you this. Okay. Because this is very nice. It's called laksam. It, it's kind of like it's kind of like a Malay pasta kind of thing. You should try this one. Uh, Lakse so. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, siya siya limo. Siya limo. I mean, this is a whole table of uh, dedicated to the sweet tooth. Anything, any dessert that you want, you can find it here. <laughs> it was hard not to pick everything from every stall, but Ying pointed me to the very best one. So I shall tease my hunger no longer and get right to it. Mmm, nasi dage with coconut milk rice. And now for the Clentonese pasta. Oh my god. Nice. I want to live in Clandam. Oh my god. Very nice. I'm in love. It's good to know. <laughs> Clanton has some weird desserts because some of it. Woo. I have to make it a point to tell you that we, as Clantonese, we like uh, very sweet food. Okay. Everything and this is perfect like for you guys. Sugar based. Wow, that's sweet. But not as sweet as you, Ying. I'm coming back to Clanton, I tell you. <laughs> Two thumbs up for Clantonese food. And Clantonese girls, of course. But I have a long way to go before picking up the language. Located 16 kilometers from Kota Baru, Kampong Saturpa is my next homestay of choice. With the modern advancements in technology and weaponry, uh, some of the old and traditional weapons are being sort of erased out. But here at Kampong uh, Sutrapa uh, Homestay, they teach you the very iconic way of making the old Chris. Hello, how are you? This is Patrick Muda, everybody. He's been uh, making Chris's for a long time. Uh, so hopefully he's gonna be passing on some, uh, some skills and traditions. So how do you start off making a Chris? What's, what's the processes? Mula-mula kita start buat mata, ketuk, lepas ketuk kita canai, lepas tu siap kita bakar balik. Ah, 
Bakar selepas bakar kita celup air balik. Hmm. Untuk sejuk eh. I really want to know you'll be able to make one of these. So do you think you can have your put your handiwork onto that one? Boleh can? Boleh. All right. Pak Muda has been doing this handicraft for the past 20 years and it's a rather diverse art because every territory requires different carvings to represent different symbolizations. Now sadly, there are only about four or five Chris Smiths left. The sheath of a Chris has to be carefully measured based on the Chris's shape. It is made of two pieces of wood that is beautifully crafted to fit together, making it look like one piece. Now, what I find most amazing is uh, the tools that he's using. I mean, he's got a, a small pickaxe, he's got a saw, and uh, a file. All that together can make so beautiful and lush as this. Now, that's a trade, and I mean, that's the worry that people have is that things like this are being lost. I mean, you would usually find this sort of in the shops, mass produced and, you know, made by machines and stuff. But there's this. This guy here who's making it by all by hand. Amazing how what was once plain wood and iron could transform into something so important to the Malay heritage. Despite its decline in usage, I believe that the significance of the Karis will live on forever. Ah, time to walk around the village and see what else I can poke my nose into. Now other things apart from the Chris making uh, you can do at the, uh, the homestay is gussing and wow. So uh, for the gussing, it gets very serious, you know, these guys are very serious about what they do and they also have some hats. So we can go. You ready? All right. There you go. Am I ready? Yeah. Good. These spinning tops weigh about three kilograms and you can spin around for one hour and 40 minutes. So you're going gonna to show me how you do it? Okay. Yeah? Okay. All right. Uh, rope around a sturdy tree. Ah, Check it before. Gonna grease up the rope a little bit. No, you know, there's no any. friction. Okay. What's important is a really tight wind. So you can see guys, these guys struggling to make sure there's no slack in the rope. It's quite a length of rope. This must be about five meters or so. And there we go. So you tie it around uh, the wrist, nice and tight. Uh, so it takes a couple of times because um, the actual spinning top at the bottom is very small. See the size of that? So uh, we'll, we'll have another go. One more go. We've seen the professional do it. Now, uh, <laughs> they're not so professional. Okay. It's tough on your thumbs, huh? <laughs> I'm going to have forearms like Popeye once I finish this. Wow. <laughs> I may as well have just thrown it on the floor. <laughs> Almost feels weightless in a sense, but uh, you can't feel it spinning, so it's kind of like a dead weight, but balanced at the same time. Very strange feeling. Yep, there's still more cultural activities for me, and fortunately, this next art is still alive and flying high. So there we go. That's the uh, that's the finished um, wow. Um, it's all actually pretty much mathematically kind of balanced. I mean, you need a, a shape that's even on both sides. Ready to go fly? Um, all right, let's go. Whoa, it sure has been a while since I've flown a kite. Hey! Oops, trash and burn. Uh-oh, did they break it? All righty, second attempt and success. Really, really strong. Ah. <laughs> you got it? Ah. There's like a humming, which is which is actually the string going against the wind. And there's a there's such a pull on it. I mean, this thing is very strong. Um, but it feels as though you can just let it go. I mean, it'll go on for infinity, of, well, at least until your string rang out. The WOW has the ability to reach a height of more than 450 meters. I wonder how high mine is right now. Now this reminds me of times on the beach, you know, when I used to live in Tringanu. Just seeing these and almost hearing them in the distance. <laughs> Hi! <it's... sighs> it may be a simple child's game, but to fly a wow against the sunset as a backdrop? Now that's a scene I won't forget. Man, there is so much beauty in this world. Time for some kampong fun! This is what I love about kampongs. There's so much wildlife. Shoot. 
Ducky, Ducky, Ducky. Come on, Duck. Come, come to Henry. Come on, come on. <laughs> when you come from friend. Ready? <laughs> ah, second victim spotted. There she is, lying eating grass. May I have this dance with you, madam? And we know. <laughs> so I woke up really early this morning to get to Pantai Suri. It's a fishing village that sits at the estuary of the Klantan River. Now to get there, you have to take a 20 minute boat ride in. Seeing that there's no way in for cars, it's amazing because instead of having vehicles everywhere, you're greeted by an orchestra of goats, ducks, chickens, and the paths are completely lined with coconut trees. Kind of reminds me of so much of my old kampong. This village has around 450 people and everyone knows everyone, which isn't surprising at all because they treated me like they knew me. <laughs> Uh, it's raining sadly now, so we're just waiting out. We had some delicious food at the homestay, uh, but uh, I think we're going to go fight through the, the weather and hopefully go for some fishing, which I can't wait for because that's one of my childhood things uh, was fishing out in the sea, out in Trunganu. So we're going to brave the weather and see what we can catch. So a really authentic uh, fisherman's experience uh, where they've got a fantastic boat. Um, the sea's just over there. They're going to teach you how to fish. And it's raining a little bit right now, but that never put off a little seafaring pirate like myself. So we're going to go off and pick a big one. Ooh. Being back on a fishing boat reminds me of when I went squid jigging and got stuck at sea for 12 hours. Yeah, hopefully it's all good this time around. I love fishing. I mean, Neptune's my buddy. He's gonna help me out tonight. I'm gonna catch a big one. And me and Pachi over here, we're gonna dine like champions. I mean, I wanna see something big come up, you know? I'm expecting every time he lugs it up, I'm expecting, like, uh, I don't know, some huge fish to come up. Got a little brownie. Oh, <laughs> it got me! <laughs> I told you I hate crabs. Like, oh, crap! <laughs> you know what? It's the nature of the beast, man. You can't expect a crab to be nice. Oh, my God, look. Okay. okay. Wow. That's probably our biggest cat so far. I'm a bit worried, because Steve Owen, he died from one of these things. <laughs> All right, we're still looking for the big ones. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to catch by the net or we're going to have to fish for it. So we'll see what else we bring up. Yeah, yeah. Woo yeah, in the That is huge. That's where we're after again. Massive. Ooh, I see fishies. So you can see, whatever the weather, these guys are still out here. I mean, it's a true sign of a fisherman. These people are really happy with their daily lives and it's great joy to be around them. I'm really enjoying the simplicity of a fisherman's life, or shall I say, a pirate. Nyaar. You know, when I'm out on the ocean, it just brings out the inner pirates in me. Although I sound a little bit more like a Jamaican, you know, chuck another shrimp on the barbie. Oh no, that's, that's Australian. Let's see if a different fishing method will bring in the mother load. So we tried fishing out in the open sea. Uh, we caught only a couple of little ones. Uh, he's going to teach me how to how to throw one of these, and perhaps maybe we can catch some fish. And the results are oh, one fish. We got one fish here. I'm soaked to the bone. The rain has just stopped. What I'm going to take back from this 
is the experience. I mean, look around us. There's nothing to that side. We can barely see the land, but, uh, but still, no fish. We caught a couple of tiddlers, but nothing to worth, you know, writing home about. Uh, but it's been great. I mean, I think it's time to go home now. If you guys ever wondered what people watched before the creation of television, well, across the Asian regions, it was Wayang Kule. Now, I'm in Kelantan, which means it's pretty much the heartland of the shadow puppetry, so it'd be such a waste if I didn't check it out. Wayang Kule has been around for over a hundred years, and Eo Hok Seng has been doing it for the past 35 years. He's well versed with 10 stories, five being history tales, and the other five self made. <laughs> Dia orang kulit ni, dia mengikut pada orang sejarah orang tua-tua dulu. Jatuh sejarah ini melibatkan Seri Rama, Laksmana, Hanuman. Sebab tu dia sebab dia daripada orang India kan. Sampai sekarang pun dia selalu memuja kepada patung Hanuman dan Seri Rama. Really interesting stories. These shadow puppets definitely aren't children's tales. The language is pretty hard to catch on, but I felt really enchanted and I was fully captivated. Kalau mengikut sejarah dia orang kulit ni, dia main di oleh orang Melayu. Sebab saya berminat kepada orang kulit dan juga berminat kepada tradisional orang Melayu. Sebabnya kita kalau orang tengok benarnya pelik yang kata tak pelik lah sebabnya apa apa pasal dia kata orang Cina ada juga yang main orang kulit, yang main di Barat. There are only two or three original Wayang Kulit masters left. So are you and I going to take the responsibility to keep it going on? Join me next week on Welcome to the Rail World as I head down south to my final destination, Johor. Boleh aja saya menai? Got natural tempo, don't worry.